joining us live from Islamabad is journalist Jawad Rana. We will be discussing the latest from Bangladesh. Welcome to News Hour. Now, Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has fled the country after tendering her resignation. Can you walk us through the events that led to this situation? Well, I think you may recall that Bangladesh and Pakistan have a shared history. They both got independent from British India in 1947. Then Bangladesh uh, got separated in 1971, something they call as war of independ independence. Now, Sheikh Majibur Rahman, whose statue you, you have just shown, that it has been stormed now, uh, he was their founding father. He was, he was assassinated uh, just after a couple of years. Now, uh, his, his daughter, who emerged as prime minister back in 2008, uh, she's been winning the election through rigging. And I think there are accumulated issues uh, ranging from, uh, from high unemployment and more importantly, the leftover legacy of so-called war of independence in 1971, because Sheikh Sina Wajid, basically uh, his father, that was the legacy of uh, her father, uh, they provided 30% quota to the jobs in the governments uh, in, in the government uh, to to the descendants of those who had participated in that war of independence. Now that has been at the heart of the entire controversy in, in Bangladesh because she created an anti-Pakistan constitu constituencies and there were large scale protests in Bangladesh, particularly by the students. And th she used to call these students as Razakars. Razakars were basically those, uh, those Bangladeshi citizens who had sided with the Pakistan military in suppressing of what the then Pakistan military called as insurgency as uh, against the against the then state of Pakistan. So it, it is a basically that context. Now we have seen that the people in, in Bangladesh, they are undoing this, that those, their so-called heroes of war of independence. They are, there seems to be, apart, apart from there are a lot of other issues and they have realized that the, uh, Bangladesh, under the leadership of Hasina Wajid, had gone too much close to uh, India, which is perceived to be a rival of Pakistan, which ha India had supported uh, uh, then so-called war of independence in Bangladesh. So I think it is a basically undoing of that kind of legacy that Hasina Wajid basically introduced in Bangladesh. She had everybody from, his, from her party in the police. She had, uh, uh, she had uh, basically infiltrated army, police, and other uh, uh, security uh, apparatus and the civilian bureaucracy with the members of her party. And, and mo more importantly, we have, we have seen that the people in Bangladesh, despite the fact that they, they, during her, her regime, there was a lot of economic development. Uh, there, at, at times, there was 7% economic growth. But nonetheless, people found that they are being discriminated as to why 30% jo job quota was being provided to the descendants of the uh, so-called warriors of the independence. So in that context, this everything has now broken out. It is a, in a, giving you a broader, bigger picture now the, it's the military, apparently, which is calling the shot. But I think there is another factor which we should not forget. And those are the students. No students seems to be calling the shots. They are dictating their terms to the military. They're telling the militaries that we are going to nominate the next interim prime minister. And they are, they are suggesting the name of Dr. Yunus, the, uh, the economist who had introduced interest-free econ economics models in Bangladesh. And he's a Nobel laureate. So I think that is a bigger picture. It is a uh, loss to the India, is a big loss to the India. China is going to benefit from the situation and Pakistan is going to also benefit the situation given the fact that uh, the kind of the hostility that existed between Pakistan and Bangladesh in, in 1971, that is a, a gone and dead story. Now people uh, in both countries, they feel a lot of, lot of uh, brotherhood among them. I think that is also going to benefit Pakistan. But in a broader picture, you may recall, we have to see the kind of the uh, 
regime uh, that was uh, during the uh, uh, that was a Sina war. That was a terrible. It was a tyrannic government. Uh, a, she hanged the those who were uh, sporting uh, uh, descendants uh, of those uh, Razakar. She called as Razakar those people who had uh, sported sided with the Pakistan military in suppressing the insurgency. And I think uh, those people, they were hanged by Hasina Wajid. And you may recall uh, uh, Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan had, uh, uh, had suspended diplomatic relations with Bangladesh when the uh, members of the jamaat islami were hanged. So she was a, a kind of a, a political character which was playing in the hands of India. And there was a lot of resentment within the military in 2011. Uh, there was a, a failed uh, military coup against uh, Hasina because the, the military thought that uh, she is uh, inching fast towards India. And that was at the cost of the Bangladesh, na Bangladesh national interest. So I think in, in that context, we have seen that uh, hundreds of thousands of people yesterday, they decided that they are going to storm the prime, prime minister's uh, residence. And they did storm the uh, prime minister's uh, re residence. She was violating the uh, orders of the uh, spirit courts. Uh, the courts had ordered the police not to open fire against, against the protesters. Despite the fact uh, he, her party's stu student wing, they opened fire on the opponent's students. And I think military uh, thought that they can no longer support Hasina, uh, and they decided to ditch her out of no option, and because the military has been supporting her for, for the last 15 years. So I think in that context, she had to she had to flee Bangladesh yesterday. And even I think there are credible reports suggesting that India probably is not willing to uh, keep her for a longer period of time. She, uh, her next destination could possibly be London or maybe Belarus. Now, in a national address, Army Chief General Wakir Zaman announced that an interim government will now be established to lead Bangladesh. Can you provide details on the structure of this interim administration and how long it is expected to govern the country? Well, uh, initial reports suggest that the interim government would be set up and the military has been consulting with the Bangladesh president with the opponent politi opposition political parties. They have released Khalda Zia, a national party's uh, leading figure who was who was disqualified by uh, through a uh, through a controversial judgment by the court under the dictations of Hasina Wajid? I think uh, she has she has also been released. They are having consultations, but again, the, there is another factor, and that factor of students because they are the one who have changed the situation altogether. Uh, Three hundred students were killed, uh, thousands were arrested, uh, hundreds of others were injured. I think they are not telling the army uh, and uh, op op opponent political parties that they are going to dictate the terms because they they were the one who have suffered the most and they would not allow anybody any political party military to benefit to uh, to exploit the situation in their favor and they are suggesting the name of a Nobel laureate uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, uh, the one who introduced uh, uh, models, different models of economy, whereby the interest-free economy can be introduced in a, in, in a country. So I think his his name is a very respectable. He is a internationally recognized figure. He could possibly be the next prime minister. Let's see how things unfold. But if, if the military doesn't listen to the student, it could be a problematic. Now, we have been seeing widespread unrest and celebrations on the streets following Sheikh Hasina's resignation. What does this reaction reveal about her more than 15-year rule? Additionally, how might these events shape the future political landscape of Bangladesh? Well, I think uh, during the last 15 years, it was perceived to be a kind of the government that is in place where... Uh, she tried to basically suppress all opponent voices. And she introduced herself, projected herself that she's the one, her, her family is the one who has sacrificed, and they were the one who, who won the war of independence. And then India since had supported uh, Bangladesh at that point of time, 
and she was playing in, in, into the Indian hands. And then, the, more importantly, there was no press freedom. There was there was no freedom of freedom of association. Something that we have now also seen in Pakistan. There is a far more uh, similar situation in Pakistan, but in a in a, in a broader picture. So, so she basically used every conceivable method every conceivable method to suppress the opposition party, mainstream opposition party, the Bangladesh National Party. Uh, its top leader, Khalda Zia, was disqualified. She was, she was arrested. So no uh, main, uh, uh, a party of any political worth was participating elections. They were boycotting the elections. Elections were largely rigged. So people were upset. And, uh, and I think in a situation where the economy wasn't as bad as, as, uh, as may, other may, may, uh, may, may project. But again, uh, we have to see that despite the fact that she, she managed to turn around economy, uh, the, in, uh, the foreign reserves were around 50 billion US dollar. And the uh, economy was booming with the as a, with the seven percent GDP and annual rate at one point of time. So I, I think it, the key reason which I, I find is that uh, she tried to she tried to unfairly suppress the opposition voices. She used uh, every conceivable method uh, to make it sure that the opposition parties do not win the elections. Then people were not participating in, in the election. It was a one party rule. And she managed the military uh, at her will. She, military was sporting, uh, sporting her. And now, yesterday, since there was no option for the military now, because the, there were hundreds of thousands of people who were marching from all over Bangladesh to the capital, Dhaka, and their only target was the Prime Minister House. And they managed, as we speak now, uh, the, uh, the, head, the head offices, of the head office of the uh, Awami League, the former ruling party, the ousted ruling party, their branches all over Bangladesh, they are being burned by the students. That shows the scale of the anger. It, it seems the era, era of Awami League is over. I mean, they have, they have exploited so much so-called war of independence. They, they banned jamaat -e islami one of the leading political party, because the allegations against jamaat -e islami was that they supported Pakistan military at the time of so-called war of independence. So in, a, in, a, in, the, in that context, I think her, her legacy would be perceived as, as a tyrannic, as a dictatorship, and people uh, had a, a, a kind of a sigh of relief yesterday. They are calling it another war of independence. Now, in 1971, they got independence from Pakistan, and now they got the got rid of the uh, rid of a political party which had led them to that so-called war of independence. It's a change of political dynamics in the region. India is in a shock right now as we speak because they uh, India now suspect that it is uh, Pakistan will have more close ties with. The, or with the new Bangladeshi government, whichever it may be, because uh, she demonstrated her animosity towards Pakistan over the period of time. Pakistanis were not happy with her rule, and more particularly since she hanged the members of the Jamaat Islami, despite a lot of criticism from Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, despite a lot of criticism from Pakistan and other countries, she was not listening to anyone. It was an iron fist rule. So-called democratic leader, she used every dictatorial method to suppress, to suppress the voice of their people. That is why now we have seen that the statue of their founding father, was removed. It was stormed. It was a humiliated. Uh, the Awami League was humiliated. The party who won the war of independence. You may recall when her father was assassinated in, in mid-70s, the founding father, uh, Sheikh Mujib she, uh, many, he, she was he was assassinated. Some other family members were also assassinated. Hasina Wajid then was a young woman. She fled to India. And now, after almost 50 years, she has once again fled to India. Because 
that is the country which had supported Awami League at, in 1971. That is a country which has been supporting her during the last 15 years, tyrannic rule. Now, the political dynamics have changed. It is a new generation which, which does not uh, recall 1971 the way the descendant of Awami League, members of the Awami League, leagues were calling. She, had, she had, has basically cultivated a constituency in Bangladesh where the descendants, members of the families of those who had participated in so-called War of Independence, they were given preference and people used to feel discriminated and people were fed up with the kind of the narrative that she had built up in, in, in Bangladesh at the cost of country's economy, at the, at the cost of the country's legal system. Now, lastly, there have been reports that Sheikh Hasina is likely to fly to London from India. You also mentioned that Belarus is an, another option. But why is she not staying in India? What can you tell us about her future? Well, India is a deeply worried because uh, India invested a lot on Hasina Waj. Uh, because through her, uh, they try to have a lot of uh, political projects in Bangladesh. India was trying to counter China because China was close, uh, inching close to Bangladesh through economic projects. So I think that is a shock. So India now, they have their own calculations. They don't want to be now perceived to be siding with Hasina because she is the most hated figure in Bangladesh. So they want to have a good, uh, cozy relation with the new government, whichever it may be. Uh, probably that would be formed after the general elections are held after three, uh, three months. So India uh, wants to have some semblance of good relation with Bangladesh. And that is why Hasina seems to be more kind of a burden, a liability, and they don't want her to stay there. Uh, her, uh, one of, uh, uh, her one of the daughter is probably in, in, the, uh, in an international organization working in New Delhi. Uh, her one of the grandson is in Belarus. So she is uh, now thinking uh, to, uh, for the time being, I think she will move to probably to London. And from there, she, her next destination could be, be Belarus. The reason being in Belarus is that uh, now people in Bangladesh, they are demanding that she should be brought back she should be held accountable. She should be tried uh, on, uh, on, on terrorism charges, on, on, on the charges that she was responsible for killing over 300 students and to whom they, she called terrorists, she called as Razakar. Razakar is, was a very cynical terminology which was used in Bangladesh in 1971 for those who had sided with the Pakistan military. So I think now uh, it's uh, basically undoing of uh, Awami League. She has a very effectively destroyed uh, her political party. New forces are emerging, new political forces are emerging in Bangladesh. And my understanding of the situation is the younger population, the students, they, are, they may lead in future. They are basically fed up with even other opposition parties because they have not been able to deliver uh, over the period of time. The military has itself been a bigger part of the pro problem. They have been repeated, repeated military coups. There have been repeated mutinies uh, with, within the uh, Bangladesh military over the period of time. So I think they don't want military to basically go beyond three, three months. They want military to hold general elections and let the people decide who is going to govern them. That is, the bigger picture. that is a bigger picture. But as we speak, let me give you a bigger picture, which is also developing in this part of the world, because Pakistan and Bangladesh, they have shared history. In Pakistan, the economy is far more, far more bad than as compared to the Bangladesh. The political situation is far more bad as compared to the Bangladesh. There have been riots in Pakistan. Hundreds of thousands of people came out in the, in, in the streets in, in, the, in the northern west uh, district of uh, Banu, uh, just not long ago against the military operation, which Pakistan army was trying to conduct. And similarly, there have been large scale riots on economic issues in Pakistani administrative Kashmir. So, and then there are similar, and then the way uh, China had rigged the election in January, so similarly in February, elections were rigged. But unlike uh, Bangladesh, in Pakistan, the, the military itself has been at the heart of the allegation that they rigged the election, they brought a government 
in power, which is a unpopular, which is a tainted with corruption, which won just 17 seat in the in the national parliament out of 262 contested elections. Rest of the seats were won by other parties, more particularly by the uh, party of Imran Khan. They have deprived it. Now people are having their eyes onto the Supreme Court of Pakistan that they will decide in favor of uh, Khan's party and the situation may get normalized. I think if, if, if now the military allegedly and the government, they are trying to scuttle, they are trying to basically influence the Pakistan Supreme Court. And if the situation go out of control, I suspect that similar situation can, ha can happen in Pakistan. But the trouble is that here military itself is at the heart of the allegation, at the center of the allegation, that it is the responsible. The military needs to distance itself and it should have a role of a genuine neutral. That is not happening and that is a warning sign, something many uh, people in Pakistan are discussing right now. So, Adrana, thank you for joining A News and thank you for your analysis. Growing tide of anti Israel sentiment. What you see behind me is just tip of the iceberg of what is happening in the country. More than half of $52 billion black CIA budget is spent on espionage network in Pakistan. How would you handle it? The US uh, has looked upon Pakistan as an ally at one point and then uh, as an enemy at the same time. That is going to be the first legal reason on the basis of which he is going to be instantly ousted by the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Joining us live, uh, Javed Rana, who's an expert on politics and geostrategic issues. In the world politics, which is not being driven by any moral principle, it is being driven by the hard geostrategic realities. In a broader picture, more countries would aspire to have nuclear weapons.